I think everybody who's an income investor loves to see monthly dividends coming in and in this video I'm going to talk about six FTSE 100 companies that pay quarterly and by just owning three of these you could get a monthly dividend paid into your account which you could reinvest back into whichever one is then coming up with the nearest X dividend date so that you can continue to snowball and compound those dividends. What have we got in these six? We've got a couple of tobacco companies, we've got a couple of oil and gas companies, we've then got a big pharma and then finally a personal care pharmacy or drug and groceries company can anybody guess who they are yeah they're all big names so we've got British American Tobacco BP GSK Imperial Brands Shell and Unilever but who do we think is going to be the best to invest into. We will have a quick look through all six of them. We'll look at what their market caps are like, their streak, their compound annual growth rate, what months they're actually paying because we want to try and work this out so that we've got one paying each month, dividend yield, what the payout ratio is and then finally have a quick look at the chart and see how they've performed over the last year. We'll then put them in and we'll figure out how much it manages to beat the FTSE 100 dividend yield which is currently sat at 3.81%. Let's kick off with British American Tobacco. Tobacco and nicotine products is the game that they're in and they have some massive names like Dunhill, Lucky Strike and Pall Mall and Camel Cigarettes. They are also moving into the non-combustible side of things. Market caps at, at about 73 billion. This is one of the dividend aristocrats with that streak of over 24 years of maintaining or growing their dividend. Compound annual growth rate is a minus 6.7. They pay in February, May, August and November coming in with the highest dividend yield that we have out of these six at 8.8. 0.87% and payout ratio slightly higher than I like it being but coming in at about 62%. Over the last year they have seen a bit of a hit on their stock price and that's down about 26%. Second company is BP and obviously we all know what BP is. It is into the oil and gas side of things but they also are branching out into lower carbon products looking at EV charging and storage for example. Over a hundred billion market cap for this. It has only got a streak of one year. Um, it took a bit of a drop in 22. Cagar is coming in at about minus 4.3. It once again pays in the February, March, August and November and its dividend yield is somewhere in the middle for these six companies coming in at 4.61 and it's got the lowest payout ratio of the six coming in at 18% which is really good and it has seen the largest growth over the last year coming in with a growth of approximately 17.1%. GSK GlaxoSmithKline, one of the large pharma companies in the FTSE 100 and it's basically looking at pharmaceuticals, the R&D side of things and then vaccines. Their figures about 57 billion market cap. It has got no streak at all. It cut its dividend last year but Previous to that, it had had a 24 year streak. Part of this is potentially through the Helion split that they had last year. Um, so that potentially had a knock on effect on dividends. Plus there are a few court cases going on at the moment as well with uh, GSK that could potentially affect their share price. Looking at a compound annual growth rate of minus 2.16. This one pays a in January, April, July and October has a dividend yield of 4.14, 52% payout ratio which is in around what I'm looking for and it has had a bit of a hit over the last year with a 21.82% reduction in share price. IMB coming in as another one of the tobacco companies 
and it really does lots of import and export in across the world but predominantly looking out into the Americas, Africa and Asia. Some of the big names that they're known for are the Galwa, JPS and Lambert and Butler. Market cap of 15.82 so quite a lot smaller than British American Tobacco. Three years streak and it's CAGR coming in at minus 8%. The rest of them that we're going to talk about all pay in March, June, September and December. Those traditional months for paying out your dividends at the end of financial quarters. Dividend yield coming in at about 8.17. Payout ratio of 56 and it has been down over the last year at approximately 5.53%. Next we've got Shell and if you have a look I've already done a video on BP versus Shell but very similar kind of operation to BP in that oil and gas side of things and looking at how do they do more or low carbon type of production moving forward. This is the largest company out of the loose, six of them at almost 200 billion of a market cap it's got a three year streak and it's CAGR over the last five years is minus 2.2. And if you think of what's been going on in that time period, we've had COVID-19, which basically dropped the, the life out of the whole petrochemical and then obviously had Ukraine war last year kicking off and seeing that spike in prices. Once again pays in May, June, September and December and comes in with a dividend yield of about 4.51% and a great payout ratio of 19%. This one is up 9.14% over the last year. And then finally Unilever is this massive of personal care drug and grocery company basically if you walk into your bathroom something in there will be a Unilever product be it a shampoo something like Dove your deodorants there'll be something there Unilever market cap of 129 billion looking at a 14 year streak so this would be known as a UK dividend aristocrat its compound annual growth rate reasonably flat over the last five years at 0.6 percent once again a March June September and December payout date and coming in this is the lowest dividend yield of all of them coming in at 3.6 percent its payout ratio is 66 percent and over the last year it's up 9.76 percent so what does this give us if we have a think about it there is only one choice for the january april july and october months and that is gsk so that one goes in straight away we then look at which do we want to go for for the february may august november time period and that's a that's a toss-up between british american tobacco and bp i personally hold british american tobacco within my portfolio i've done a video where i talk about one of the reasons why that is the case have a look at that it's up above or down below and let's put that one in the basket as well and that leaves us a choice of Imperial Brands, Shell or Unilever. And it's very much up to you to make that decision on what you want. If you already have uh, bats in there, you probably don't want another tobacco. Let's go for a little bit of diversification. It goes on to Shell or Unilever. Shell is coming in reasonably cheap at the moment. Its stock price come down a little bit over the, the last period. So potentially that is something that you might want to go for. But in this case, I'm actually going to go for Unilever because I hold Shell in some of the ETFs that I already, already hold. So I'm going to put Unilever in the basket. So we end up going GSK, British American Tobacco and Unilever just keep rotating throughout the year. What kind of dividend yield are we going to get on this? As I said earlier, you have the FTSE 100 paying out a 3.81%. If you were to go for this package, you would end up with a 5.7%. And I quite happily take 5.7% as a dividend. And you would have something coming in each month 
that you could then automatically just reinvest back in and just try and hit those ex-dividend dates. And that's just one of those strategies that quite a lot of people use. If you decided to do the combination being British American Tobacco, GSK, and then Imperial Brands, you would be coming out at a just slightly over 7% return. That is also almost twice what you would get if you just bought an ETF like the VUKE which buys into the FTSE 100. Done a video on that, have a look at that one. I've also done other videos which look at dividends that pay over 8%. So why don't you go and have a quick look at this video that gives you the opportunity to potentially bag an 8% return. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.